iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. It's written in Proverbs 27, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And that is one of my favorite scriptures because it is so true. YouTube has been such a valuable resource to me. I've gleaned so much information from people who have uh, dedicated their time and effort in sharing videos, sharing their expertise and the knowledge. And what a wonderful resource it is. To be able to have that information at our fingertips is something our grandparents could have only dreamed of. I'd like to share some of that knowledge that I have today with you guys, and that's going to do, uh, got to do with how to sharpen, properly sharpen a chainsaw and adjust chain tension. So let's go over the tools that you're going to require, and uh, we'll get started. Everything laid out here is all you really need as far as a kit to put together to do proper chainsaw uh, blade maintenance. I'll have, uh, starting with a vise, I'm going to use my bench vise when I'm in the shop, but when in, in, when if I'm in the field getting wood, I'm going to use this uh, stump vise. What you do is essentially pound it into a round, lock the bar through the knobbed handle here, and it gives you a really solid platform to file off of. It's a lot easier than trying to balance it um, on, your, on your legs. Uh, from there, you're going to need your uh, tool, your bar tool that's going to come with any chainsaw that you buy for adjusting and releasing the bar tension. You're going to need uh, the correct round file, rat tail file. There's going to be typically four lengths that you're going to run into. Um, the smallest is going to be 5 30 seconds. I've even seen some 4.5 millimeter, 3 16 and 7 30 seconds for your larger professional saws. Now your, if you look at the manual that came with the saw, it will tell you what chain, what, what file you're going to need for your chain. If you have a replacement chain, uh, make sure uh, you just save the wrapper and it'll tell you. But uh, most of your bigger saws that you're going to want to be uh, uh, purchasing or the larger chain you're going to want to be running is going to be the 7 30 seconds. Now, there are various types of file guides, and trust me, I have tried them all. This is, seems to be the most popular that I see. What it is, is it's just a steel file guide that clamps on to a standard, uh, your standard file, and it has your angles, your 30 degree, your 15 degree angles, and I see a lot of guys using the, these. It's a, they're a little bit clunky, but if you don't have a, uh, a lot of practice at this, this is a good place to start. I would consider this to be a set of training wheels for a file, and once you become more proficient, you can get rid of it. The last thing, and most neglected thing, that few people know, this really separates the men from the boys, is a raker file and a raker guide. And what that is, I'll demonstrate in the middle, or just a little bit. But you can go to Oregon.com, or Oregon Chainsaw, just type in Oregon Chainsaw and they will have in their saw maintenance, they'll have accessories and this is called a raker guide and it's only just a couple dollars. You can get a combo raker guide with a raker file and um, I'll demonstrate that. But that's essentially it. One thing I want to note is when you are, when you're purchasing files, uh, don't buy files from Harbor Freight or cheap files. Buy something that's Swiss or German made or even American made. They're a little more rare, but the Swiss have always made the best files. Uh, the Volarer brand is really good. Uh, buy yourself a case and uh, these will last you probably a lifetime for the average user. So you only have to buy them once and they'll, they just last and last. It's a very good brand. There are a lot of people that have lots of ideas about chainsaw sharpening. Um, I even bought into this, tried one of these, a uh, file guide, and, and yeah, they work, but they are very slow and, and impractical and clunky, and I just, after using, I, I can't recommend it. Just start with a basic file guide, as shown here, and graduate up until you no longer need it. And I'll show you the techniques that will help. Like you saw in your bench vise, and just before you start sharpening, I want you guys to tighten up the chain tension and most of your adjusters are going to be on the side not so tight that you can't easily spin the chain but I want to take all the sag out of it what this will do is this will help keeping the chain from rolling from side to side when you're uh, sharpening on it you don't need to tighten these back up we'll just leave them loose the tensioner will hold it just fine some of your saws uh, most of the steels are going to have their adjuster right here some of the saws are going to have them inside right here but typically it's going to be a flat bladed screwdriver and 
they're pretty universal. A recent addition on chainsaw blades that I've really uh, enjoyed, I started to see a few years ago, are these laser marks on the back side of the cutting tooth. And what they are is that shows you the angle. It's just a little black laser mark slash across there. And when you are filing your saw, you can line it up and make sure you're in alignment. It prevents you from going too, too steep of an angle, uh, too flat of an angle, and it's just a great feature. I, I know that these all come on the steel brand chainsaws, I've seen them, or chains, I've seen them on the Oregon and the Windsor, which are going to be your most common chains. I would not buy a chain that didn't have a laser mark angle indicator on there because it really will assist you in keeping the proper angle. Most chains are going to need to be filed at a 30 degree angle, and you can see the benefit of one of these file guides that come readily available. If you don't have any chainsaw filing tools, the best value is to go to Oregon or your hardware store and they sell a, a file kit. <coughs> that will include a file, hand, two handles, a file guide, a raker guide, and a raker file, and it's a pretty good value and I think you can get it for right around $20. But if, if you don't have the laser marks on your saw or you're just a little bit uncomfortable with with maintaining the angle, you can line, use this to line up with the bar with a 30 degree angle and get a very nice edge. It actually works very well. It's, I really can't knock it. I, I would recommend it if you haven't, don't have any experience and aren't quite up to speed on this yet. All right, if you're ready to take off the training wheels with the file guide, you can go with just a standard file. One mistake that I see a lot of people making is they'll tilt the file this way or they'll tilt the file this way. You want your file to be pretty much parallel with the top of the cutting surface. Also, people have a tendency of putting a downward pressure on the file, which actually starts to cut down into the teeth and provides a real big hook in the tooth. You don't want that. When you're filing, you actually want to, to have a little bit of an upward a little bit of an upward pressure. And don't push too hard. Nice and easy. And try to be very consistent. If I run this file across the, these teeth five times, I want to be sure and do that five times on the next. Now the, the teeth alternate in which way they cut. So you'll skip one and you'll go back. Nice and easy. If you haven't any nicks or hit, rock, hit any rocks or chipped your, your blades at all, you just don't need very much pressure. It's just called touching up the blade. And then nice and smooth and you'll feel the file start to cut. It's just what you want. So you'll go all the way around on this side. Maintain that angle on the laser mark. And then once you've gone all the way around, you switch over, position your body on the other side of the bar, or flip the bar around in the vise, and you will file the other side in this manner. I wouldn't do it from this side, I'm just demonstrating. Once you've cut, filed both sides of all of the teeth, and you've been all the way around, and you're confident that everything is sharp, you should be able to feel a nice point on there, all around there, very, very sharp. You know you have it. We're going to check our raker guide. What a raker is, is it's the portion in front of the cutting tooth here that actually cleans out the chip or the, the cut that is made by the, the blade in front of it. And what will happen over time is as you file these chains, these, these uh, cutting teeth down, they actually are become lower in relationship to the raker. If you find that your chainsaw is wandering all over the place, it won't cut straight, um, sometimes you'll think you have a bent bar, you, you, know, you just can't figure out why it won't work properly. Chances are, is your rakers are too tall. And as those things go through, they're lifting the teeth and they're wobbling the bar, the, the bar all over the place. And so with a simple raker guard, guide, you can correct this. What it does is it spans the two cutting teeth. And in the center right here, you'll see a little hole, and this is a guide that will measure the depth. So you'll put, you'll span the two teeth, and you'll see your raker is sticking up right there. With, it, with a little raker file, you'll just file that down until it's flush with the top of the guide. 
and you don't you won't be skipping teeth on this because they're all the same so you span the top of those two teeth now you're not going to need to do this every time you sharpen your chainsaw maybe one out of ten times maybe less but as you can see right there I'm not filing anything this is a relatively brand new chain and the rakers are are at the correct correct height but this is something that's very important and if your chainsaw is not cutting properly I would definitely look into this there's one other thing I'd like to check before I put everything away after using the saw and this is especially if I cut in a pitchy wood and I learned this the hard way by nearly destroying a hundred dollar professional saw bar right here at the inside of your bar you'll see some small ports there'll be one there probably be one on each side you know it, it depend on the bar what these are are these little lubricating ports and they transfer the oil the bar oil from the power head into the running surface on the chain if you cut in pitchy wood and don't keep your saw blown out and cleaned out these will actually clog up and I had a brand new bar that I had to take in and have completely rebuilt because I got pitch in those and they starved the bar so one thing you do want to check that's why I recommend blowing everything out every time you use it take your bar off use compressed air just blow everything out inspect everything make sure all your bolts are tight and uh, that's something to look for. Once we have the shot saw all sharpened, now it's time to adjust the chain. This is a, there's a lot of mystery and a lot of misinformation about this. A lot of people have the wrong ideas. You want this chain relatively loose. Now we tightened this up to do the sharpening. As you can see, that thing snaps back in there. That is way too tight. You can feel a lot of resistance on it. And what that will do is that will wear out your bar very quickly and your front sprocket. So what we're looking for is we don't want this thing hanging down like this, but we don't also don't want it up tight. We want just to see a little bit of you know, work it back and forth as you adjust it. We just want to see a little bit of daylight through there. That's fine. A lot of people think that's too loose, but it's not. Uh, if it becomes so loose as this that you're throwing the chain, give it just a little bit more. And I don't know what it is about chains. Uh, I do know that the new ones stretch more than the ones you've used for a while, but this is just something you're just always uh, kind of fooling with. Uh, as you use the saw, as it heats up throughout the day, uh, you'll need to make fine, small fine adjustments. So when you get adjusted it, you can adjust it, move it back and forth, and get it just right. That's what I like to see right there. Once you get the proper adjustment, Tighten it up. Voila, you're good to go. One thing you want to look for on your bigger saws, if you're running uh, the larger bars, I would say 28 inches or up, is a grease socket or a grease hole for the front sprocket. And you'll know you have it uh, by you just clear off all of the oil here and you'll see a very small hole. It's just a little pinhole. And that's what this is for. This is a chainsaw grease gun. You simply remove the cap. You just pack it full of a good high quality axle grease and it's a, it acts like a plunger here. I've seen these at Home Depot, at Lowe's, uh, any logging shop, saw shop, they're going to have them. And you simply, each time that you refill your oil for your bar oil, you just give that a squirt. And what that does is that keeps that lubricated. And typically you'll find one on each side. Remember, there's two things in life that you never want to loan to anyone. One is your wife, and the second is your chainsaw. As long as you remember those two things, it'll save you a lot of grief.